Today marks the end of the July-September fundraising quarter, and tomorrow is the latest day for a candidate to make the stage for the fourth Democratic presidential debate. These deadlines, of course, could create a major shift and bring about an exodus of some of the candidates vying for the party's nomination. Over the weekend, we saw several candidates making their pitch in New Hampshire. Andrew Yang, Senator Cory Booker, and Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders, to name just a few. Joining us with an update from the ground in New Hampshire is Fox News political reporter Paul Steinhauser, joining us now via Skype. Welcome back, sir. Always great to join you guys. Good morning. Absolutely. Paul, you always bring us such great stuff. You get great questions into these candidates. You spoke in particular recently with Andrew Yang and asked him a little bit about what his corruption, anti-corruption plan would look like in light of some of the, you know, things that have come out about Hunter Biden serving on a board while Joe Biden is vice president. Let's listen to what Yang had to say about that. Um, so to me, it's a very small sacrifice to say, look, while I'm in office for four or eight years, none of my family members should be um, on the boards of uh, I would say even not just any foreign company, any domestic company, because uh, you have to be honest where people know that that could end up influencing uh, decisions at the highest level. And it, asking your family to take a four or eight year hiatus from serving on board seems to me to be very reasonable. Yeah. And Paul, what's really interesting to me there, Yang, obviously a new political candidate, like that answer was very straightforward and kind of <laughs> obvious. But Elizabeth Warren, a much more experienced Paul, got really tripped up on this same question. She did. And that happened right here in New Hampshire last uh, Wednesday when she was uh, at a campaign event in Keene State. She was asked by uh, Annie Linsky of The Washington Post, you know, what her corruption plan, she's put two out already, uh, would do when it comes to uh, the children of vice presidents. And she immediately said no and then stumbled because I don't think she remembered at the time the details of her plans. All these candidates, though, let's be honest, they're kind of walking a tightrope here. They don't want to implicitly criticize former Vice President Joe Biden. Far from it, right? They don't want to do that right now. They want to stand in simpatico with him against the president. But at the same time, they want to make clear that if they're president, they're in the White House, their vice president's children will not be on the boards of any foreign company. So mm -hmm. a little bit of a tightrope. You also heard Senator Bennett say the same thing uh, uh, in an interview last week with Politico. Yeah, I thought that was particularly interesting. I know that Andrew Yang also spoke a little bit about the economy and about whether the a recession might be good for him, which, which raised some eyebrows. Let's take a listen to that and we'll get your reaction. I would never uh, wish for the economy to have a downturn because I know that lives get uh, disrupted and uh, in some cases even lost when there's an economic downturn. Uh, so when I was asked a question, how would it affect my campaign, um, I think most people would agree that um, if there's a downturn, the party in power or in office generally has a harder time getting reelected, but I would never wish for that. Well, what did you make of that answer, Paul? I mean, he's, he's walking a pretty fine line there whenever it comes to recession. He is. That was my interview with him at a Chamber of Commerce event uh, mm -hmm. in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Now, minutes earlier, somebody in the audience had asked him just that. If there is a recession, will it help your campaign? And he, he said, you know, yes, it would help my campaign. Now, politically, strategically, that's correct. But uh, then I followed up in the interview because you don't want to play into President Trump's playbook. He has right. said multiple times that the Democrats are rooting for a recession to hurt the president. You saw Yang there delicately get out of that. So, mm -hmm. yes, I mean, politically, does it help? Of course it would help. Party in power always suffers during a recession. But yeah. Yang did raise some eyebrows with his initial comment, walked it, walked delicately walked out of it right there, guys. Yeah. yeah. Right. I think it's funny. I mean, we've interviewed him a couple times here, and he's always just very direct. He's a little too honest. Yeah, he's yeah. maybe a little too <laughs> honest sometimes. So that might be an example of that. Um, Senator Cory Booker uh, also got some attention when he suggested if he didn't raise enough money, mm -hmm. he was going to be dropping out of the race. Well, it looks like he's here for a little bit longer. Let's take a listen to what he had to say. But we got to a point where we saw candidates that were raising multiples of what we were raising, they have 100% name recognition, and that we were not going to be able to stay in competition with them unless we raised significant money. So I told the truth. If we couldn't raise $1.7 million by Monday, we would have to think hard about getting out of this race. It's, I mean, so... Uh, yeah, it's funny yeah. that he's portraying himself as an underdog. Right. You know, as a sitting senator who's yeah. racked up in lots of endorsements in New Hampshire and also in Iowa and other early states, and he's playing this kind of underdog card, is, is he selling it there? It, that was an interesting moment, right? Because, yes, Cory Booker, we thought, was going to be one of the superstars when he jumped in the race. He's doing everything right. He is probably the best orator on the campaign trail. He, uh, he's put a lot of resources here in New Hampshire, in Iowa as well, and South Carolina, the early voting states, and Nevada. But yeah, he just hasn't been popping in the polls uh, and his fundraising lags behind the leaders. 
that was about halfway through that pitch of his that he needed to raise the 1.7 million. We knew he was going to do it, right, guys? Because they probably set a goal they knew they could reach. Otherwise, well, I guess he'd be out of the race. Uh, but it was a little bit of a gambit there. And uh, as you said this morning, he announced that they did reach their goal. Cory Booker continues on. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know Julian Castro, he tried something similar. What, what, what's the status on his campaign? We'll, we'll find out very soon because we haven't seen those numbers yet. As you mentioned, the end of the third quarter is coming up at the end of tonight. Some of the campaigns will be putting out their numbers immediately, the ones that like their numbers. Pete Buttigieg's campaign has said they'll put out their numbers probably first thing tomorrow morning. He raised the most in the second quarter. We'll see how his third quarter numbers are. Castro, Castro definitely is, uh, you know, faces some uphill challenges. He's going to make the. He's already made the debate. We know coming up in two weeks in Ohio, but he has a long way to go to reach the thresholds for the November debate. Stay tuned on his numbers. Yeah. All right. Absolutely. Well, I know you got to head out of here. Where are you headed yeah. today? What are you up to? Well, Bernie Sanders is here for a second straight day, uh, combining some campus events on college campuses, also with some union events. We'll keep an eye on him. Obviously, in the recent polls here, he was in third place, trailing behind Warren and, and uh, Biden. So he's got a little bit of work to do. Mm -hmm. All right. Come back and tell us what's going on, Paul. Thank you. See you soon, Paul. Thanks, guys. Coming up, new Nevada statewide primary polling shows a surprising candidate tied for fifth place. And the Biden campaign is giving up on digital ad marketing, which is some, one strategist put it, is not a great sign. Team Rising is going to weigh in on this next.